Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. We were in the boat today. Yeah. We were in a freaking snow, practically a <laughs> snowstorm, kind of. Yeah. But I mean, yesterday and today, we fished together. And, you know, I'll tell you something. Um, we caught fish. Yeah. And we saw, uh, whenever diver ducks would fly by, I know you're such a waterfowler. <laughs> Brett, what kind of ducks are those? Brett, Golden eyes. Ducks. <laughs> Golden eyes. <laughs> Buffalo heads. <laughs> they might have been mergazers. And then every time we go by freaking geese, I hear I hear uh, Brett in the front of the boat making goose sounds. <laughs> <laughs> How's that go again? Make a goose sound. What were you? Luck, luck, luck. Yeah, that's luck, luck, yeah, luck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Luck, so every time we go by geese, he's doing that. He, I wouldn't have to I know, say a word. I can hear him clucking the front, you know. And uh, I, I think that's what it was. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. He blames the dogs, you know. In the car, he blames the dogs. I mean, it's unbelievable. But uh, but no, I tell you, we. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, the other part of this. Sure, had a good time fishing with you. Yeah. You know, we, we really had some fun the last couple of days. Man, I went from a freaking jig bite where we were catching a few fish. We said, you know what, Brett, this is getting too freaking frustrating. Let's change it. Let's put, our, let's put some lures in front of a whole bunch of fish and pull some cranks. And we did that, and I'll tell you what, did things turn on for us. Absolutely. And it's amazing because, uh, you know, Dan and I talked about it coming up here, and uh, we're like, ah, and I, I Joe, many, how many years have I said I, I loaded up on crankbaits for our trip to Lake of the Woods, yeah. and then I never you take never them out. Of them? My, I never take them out of my tackle <laughs> box. We pull spinners in the summer, or we or we drag jigs in the spring or fall or whatever. And we were dragging jigs, and Dan and I caught a couple fish, but it was pretty tough that first day. And then we started out dragging jigs, I think, yesterday. And then you're like, we need to cover more water. We need to get in front of these fish. This just isn't working. We caught it. We picked off a couple fish. We switched to crankbaits, and it was like, whack, whack, whack. What like, wasn't it, though? It, it was, turned on. It was really, really game on. And you know, I'll tell you, it's not that crankbaits are work better than jigs in the spring fishing all the time. Right. They did these last couple of days when conditions were tough. Fish were spread out. They had lockjaw. You know, when they have lockjaw, you can be on a whole bunch of, you can be on six fish, put a jig in front of them, and those six fish don't want to eat. You're screwed. You know what? Now let's put a crankbait on. Let's, let's, let's put it right in front of their face with a three-way rig, and let's go through thousands. Now you might get a couple that get that reaction bite. Hey, tell you what, all of a sudden we have an ex- a successful fishing trip. Explain that three-way rig. You know, a three-way rig is simply a three-way swivel. It's real simple. It's just a three-way swivel. One part of the swivel goes to your fishing rod. The other part has a six-foot leader, and it goes to a shallow diving crankbait. And the third, you have about a two-foot piece of line with about a two-ounce weight on it. And really what you're doing is you're trolling up current, and all you're doing is just making sure that your weight's near the bottom. And that crankbait, with the current, and you're going up upstream about a mile and 1.2 miles per hour, that crankbait's always going because of the current. It's always going crazy. So you're moving real slow, and you know, when you go through the holes of a river and come up on flats and stuff, it's it's so cool because if you're running a straight crankbait, that crank might be running eight feet down. In some cases, you're hitting bottom. In some cases, you're going through a 15-foot hole and it's, the, the fish aren't going to come up seven feet to grab it. But when you're using that three-way rig, it's almost like a bottom bouncer. You're right. covering the bottom. You're constantly covering the bottom and putting that crank on the bottom of the, you know, the river where most of those fish are living. I'll tell you, it's just an effective way to do it. We did that today. And it, here's the other thing that was really interesting. I, as you saw my dashboard, I was going through a lot of crankbaits, wasn't I? Yeah, you were s- switching quite a bit. I was trying to get it dialed in because I'd given you one one lure. Greg, what was the name of that Rapala that we used? Yeah, flat, flat a, wrap. A, a flat, flat wrap. A flat wrap, and it's kind of a unique Rapala. But you were using a gold flat wrap and just cranking on them consistently. And I was rotating I mean, let's bait. be honest. It was maybe the lure. It was... Say, so are you sure <laughs> Brett actually <laughs> caught... Are you sure it's Brett that caught fish? <laughs> well, you know, I think I think uh, maybe the, the, the good Lord was good to you because it's your 50th show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. 500, 500, 500 He's for always the good. But uh, I'll tell you what. Um, I was rotating finally at the end. I found a lure that I think rivaled it. Yeah. And I'll tell you what that was. It was a surprise to me. It was a... I'm going to give you a tip now. Lake of the Woods, this is a tip. A scatter wrap in the minnow style, gold alburnus. That gold alburnus is kind of a dark, shiny gold. We pull that scatter wrap, which a scatter wrap is a, a lure that's got that curved bill on it. What happens is when it goes through the water, it kicks to the side. Well, normally that's the kind of bait you want to use in the summer when the fish are active and the water temperatures are up there. You know, in this weather, you, it, water, you want to use a tight. I put that, I just said, I'm going to try it. Screw it. I'm going to try it. I put that on. I'll tell you what, I started catching fish immediately. I catch multiple immediately. fish. I mean, yeah. boom, 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 boom. That, that I learned something new, but did, that was a cool yeah, thing. Yeah, I taught something to Joe Henry for once on Lake of the Woods. Well, what did you teach me? <laughs> what? Oh. 
<laughs> that, you sure the heck didn't pick that crankbait out. That your crankbait catches fish. Or That's t- what I taught you. No. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Uh, um, no, I'll tell you what you did, you did teach me is, you know what? Let's get that camera right down to the water. Let's hold that walleye in an ice cold hand. Let's try to keep it and hold it there for a while and then adjust it and turn the angle just perfectly and then lower it down into the water and he's gonna put it in a slow mo and you lower it in the water to release it. But I'll tell you, those those little little things you do is why your darn videos turn out so darn good. You know, I just but we, we did a lot of extra nuances today, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to make you keep your hand in that cold water as long as possible, <laughs> really. Joe, the camera does the slow-mo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's funny that you say that because I'm like, Joe, all right, I'm going to have you release and I'm going to do it in slow-mo. So Joe's like, okay, you ready? Here we go. I'm like, no, Joe, the camera does the slow well, mo. It was kind of funny, though, because I told Brett, I said, that's just like when you talk to somebody from another country and they don't understand uh, English real good. You talk real loud so they can understand it better. <laughs> so I was using that gold uh, flat wrap, and you had one other uh, Rapala just like that. Oh, he's in like a silver and black. Well, I'll tell you, I had, I had one other Rapala just like it. And then I, it, Greg Jones is going to start pulling crankbaits. You know, he's pulling a jig. So he's going to start pulling crankbaits. I think he had that on about three minutes and he freaking broke it. No, I, I, I pulled that crank for a day and a half. I had no problems. I think he pulled it for about uh, maybe five minutes and he snagged up. He pulls it in and the darn bill's broken off. I'm like, well, Jonesy, Come on. what the heck? Go back to the jig. Yeah. Come on. Well, that's what you started off with, Greg, today was the jig, but uh, your jig is, it's not your average, it's a, not your typical average jig. Yeah. It's, or do you want to- learned get- that from uh, Nicole Stone's husband, actually, actually dragging a jig. I think it's popular with North Dakota guys and started with it right away. I always liked the ringworms and that type of thing. I did slip a stinger on it, but, uh, and I was hanging with you for quite a while, as long as we were, in that 14 foot, it was a three quarter ounce, so I could get it down. Had to run a lot of line out. Rod holder caught most of them, you know. He seen, but um, it was uh, and it that jig's running just about like a crankbait would run down there. I'm trying to work it inch or two off the bottom if I see the rod touch, bring it up a little bit, that type of thing. And it's way back there. I mean, it took me longer to get. Uh, get the fish in with the jig but it was trolling it like a crank i tried to go to lead i couldn't get him to work on that obviously i tried uh putting a crank down on a three-way and lost joe's uh, other <laughs> we had two of those flat wraps and i lost one in 90 seconds so I figured, ah, but that jig back. had a blade on it though too yeah that blade on there has something oh, is that a it. secret was i not supposed no, to no no you know it's uh, <laughs> i think that's a mission tackle product it showed up a few years ago i told you the story of uh i drove 10 miles and walked another mile to go buy some more to get back there and that jig was working that day and i've yeah he says i need these jigs so he takes his boat 10 miles down the river gets out and walks a mile to the store (laughs) buys 25 dollars worth of these jigs or whatever it was oh oh yeah i saw three 10 pounders in a row and i was sitting right next to him and (laughs) i asked him if he had any more and he said no it's the last one Asked him where he got them, and he told me, and said, "I'll be right back in about an hour." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Walk a mile. I mean, that's the testament of a true fisherman, right there. Walk a mile for a jig that you just watched three ten-pound walleyes yeah, get caught. Said on. He was on his his third twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty-incher, and I was sitting about as far as away as we are right now. There's, it's not the fisherman at that point. There's something different going on, and just. Got to have just like your plug today. You know, your plug caught more than. Yeah, I never uh, changed once. That that you never changed once. Joe changed about six, seven times, and he finally found one that could hang with it. You know, but the rest of them were not doing it. You know, and and they were fussy. And they doesn't matter where you go this time of year. Them that water temperature drops at all, but to degrees like that. I mean, it just saw it out at the NWT at Detroit. I mean them. Those are the pros. They were guys drawing blanks, you know, and seen it at all kinds of different fisheries, especially in the spring. If the water temperature goes backwards, you got your work cut out for you. So looks like it's going to be nice this weekend. So for everybody coming up, that uh, that equation is going to change and go the right yeah. way. Well, what I what my takeaway is from what happened these last two days is the weather change and that can shut down fishing. And how many times do you hear that? Oh, I took my trip and the weather changed and he should have been here yesterday, that type of thing. So fishing was decent on Monday. David caught that 28 and a half. 
Fishing was okay on Tuesday as things were changing. Wednesday, fish, if you talk to most of the people, fishing got real tough, except for us. And what did we do? We changed tactics. So how important is that when fish aren't biting to be uh, flexible enough to change up presentations until you find something that works? Yeah, and that's the advantage of having multiple people too. I mean, that's different presentations and trying different things. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Northern Minnesota's Walleye Factory is a year-round world-class fishing destination. The perfect getaway this summer is just a short drive to Lake of the Woods. Fish Big Traverse Bay, the Rainy River, or visit the unique Northwest Angle. To catch big fish, you have to go where the big fish are. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. 